When dawn strikes, the frog population emerges at the water surface. At the border of small lakes or tiny pools, two eyes can be seen emerging from the water. A pool frog, the smallest of all green frogs, shows its skin. The differences between the three types of frog species are not easily determined. Because of the outstanding magnifying abilities of our film equipment, we can spot the minor differences in the eyes that distinguishes this pool frog from the other two species that were evolved from their common ancestor. We encounter the pool frog in a small pool with dense vegetation. At the period of filming, mating season has begun. The sexes can be distinguished with ease during this time of year. Males will take on lighter skin colors compared to the larger females. Water is essential during mating season because the eggs cannot survive on land. The female frog can release up to 4000 eggs in clumps into the water in the mating season. Only a small proportion of the larvae developing in the aquatic environment will reach the bank. Frogs consume small vertebrates and invertebrates. On the other hand, the frogs are being hunted by an abundance of enemies. These include birds, pikes, foxes and snakes. Cannibalism is also not uncommon. To avoid predation, pool frogs are located in shallow lakes and waters. This to avoid predation by large fish. However, the main form of defense against predation is the abundance of vegetation. The frogs use this for housing and hiding spots. The marsh frog predominantly rests peacefully on the shore of large water bodies. However, spotting him along smaller water bodies is also not uncommon. The marsh frog enjoys the heat of the sun falling down on him. It will rest in places with less vegetation, except at the riverside. This frog is the largest of the three species and therefore it will be able to consume larger prey. In a laboratory experiment, a marsh frog was seen eating three mice in a row. It is not easy to distinguish the difference between the three frog species. Only minor external features will reveal the true species. Like the color of the frog's iris. In the iris of pool frogs, almost no brown colors or dark spots are visible. The eye is colored in an even yellow layer. Unlike the pool frog, the marsh frog expresses a dark and brown iris color, with almost no yellow pigment. The stranger in our midst is the edible frog, or bastard frog, a hybrid species descending from the pool and marsh frog. Remarkably, the hybrid offspring is fertile. The edible frog is named after its use in the French cuisine. This hybrid species has some features from both of the first two mentioned species. A small quantity of dark spots can be spotted in the eye. This is the result of an intermediate form of the genes originating from the pool frog and the marsh frog. Not surprisingly, size and coloration are found at intermediate types too. The habitat of the bastard is similarly to that of the bullfrog. So, you might wonder, why do the colors differentiate? Camouflage can be proposed as one of the explanations for this mysterious difference. 
As clarified earlier, the pool frog inhabits shallow lakes predominantly, therefore needing the green coloration to blend in with the green vegetation. The marsh frog, however, is blending in with less clear water and less vegetation. This requires the black coloration of the marsh frog. The hybridization did elect the intermediate coloration in the edible frog. Because of this, the edible frog is not picky when looking for a place to live. It can live in a variety of habitats. It can even sustain its amphibious life in the flooded tire track. Remarkable, isn't it? The pool frog is typically distributed from central France to north Germany. Even populations in Russia have been recorded. In the Netherlands it is most common in sandy terrains. The edible frog has nearly the same distribution as the genetic father, the pool frog. The marsh frog is more widely spread. We even notice a far south distribution, extending its habitat from the European mainland towards Asia. In the Netherlands the frog is most common in the west. In this graph the observations in the Netherlands are shown. As shown in our research, the count of individual marsh frogs was almost non-existent in each and every water body, except one, with almost a complete absence of vegetation cover. The pool frog, on the other hand, was most seen in water bodies with high vegetation cover. The edible frog, ultimately, was found when the vegetation cover was at an intermediate level. A viable explanation for this display is that the intermediate form of both the marsh frog and the pool frog, the edible frog, must be found at intermediate levels of habitat. This is caused by niche differentiation to avoid interspecific competition. We have three beautiful species on our hands, which are interrelated and who share a common habitat, but nevertheless are different in size, coloration and an abundance of other diverse attributes. The nature works with wonders, even with a species as small or common as the green frog.